the real Lucas Wong story is more intriguing than anyone could have possibly imagined. Born in Hong Kong in 1999, and being one of the rarest individuals to pause a K-pop audition just by striking some random poses, and with the shortest training period ever under SM Entertainment, his rise to fame was meteoric. However, his glorious moment was sadly short-lived when his past unexpectedly caught up with him. As one of the most famous members of NCD's Chinese subunit Wavy, Lucas had it all, fame, money, gifts and girls. But something about Lucas just didn't sit right with some people. Whether they thought of him as an imposter, arrogant, conceited, or aggressive. And what happened during his short career to make people hold such a huge grudge against him, a grudge that would lead to the destruction of his career. It all began to unravel on the 23rd of August, 2021, when Lucas was accused of gaslighting and money leeching by an ex-girlfriend. This prompted two other alleged ex-girlfriends to open up and share their stories too, which were uncannily similar stories to the first one. A few days after the story broke it was claimed that Lucas was bisexual, dating boyfriends and having sexual relationships when he was as young as 13 years old. Watch the whole story to delve into the hidden dark secrets behind the male idol and reach the final shocking conclusion about Lucas Wong. The story starts with a tweet on August the 22nd at 8 a.m. in the morning. The tweet said, There was a man born on January 25th. He is very popular and has deep dark double eyelids. He will soon be exposed by someone, and the agency will try to protect him, but it won't go the way they want it to. How did this turn into a thriller movie plot so fast you might ask? But this was not all, as the person behind the account posted a second tweet at 9 a.m. The tweet said, The private life of a man famous for being handsome and the most popular on the team will be revealed. Many fans will be disappointed and leave, and there will be a late response from the agency. Due to the agency's late response, the remaining fans will also leave one by one. This has raised more questions than anything. Who was this anonymous person and how did they know about the scandal before it even happened? The poster also pretended to be someone working for the news scandal agency Dispatch. The same anonymous person also posted about the scandal on Weeble at the same time. Then it all kicked off the next day on August 23rd when a Korean netizen claiming to be Lucas's ex-girlfriend came forward with scathing allegations. The post gave others courage. Soon thereafter, a Chinese netizen also came forward with claims of Lucas's misbehavior. The scandal grew and soon became the most talked about thing in K-pop, given that NCT is one of the top idol groups with a massive fandom. The first netizen to come forward was Korean, let's call her Fanger Lei. She suddenly dropped a long thread that detailed her relationship with Lucas, claiming to be Lucas's ex-girlfriend and accusing him of gaslighting as well as emotional abuse when they were still in a relationship. She claimed that he approached her first, expressed interest in her, and gave her his number. They started dating not long after that. Moreover, while they were dating, he often asked her to pay for everything, including luxury items, expensive hotels, and getting him designer clothes as gifts. The fan also claimed that when Lucas's career took off, he told her that if she's not going to buy him a house or a car then she might as well not buy him anything. She said, He gaslighted me and said there was nobody that understood him but me. Every time he came to the hotel he would just order room service, eat, and sleep. From the moment we checked out, he wouldn't contact me too much and drew a line because he was uncomfortable. More seriously, whenever Lucas got angry, he often said bad words, as if both A and his fans were extremely hateful. To prove her accusation, A also provided a series of chat messages, lots of Lucas's private selfie photos, and even an audio clip with a voice chat believed to be Lucas's voice. Right after the scandal was exposed, Lucas was spam calling her to try to explain everything, while we were still blown away by the first accusation. They eventually broke up with no hard feelings due to Lucas's busy schedule. That's when it allegedly all went downhill. According to the fan, Lucas still often asked to visit and have sexual relations with her at the hotel or her house, and went as far as to ask her to pay for everything because he couldn't use the company card.
At this point, fans were in shock about the allegations. The whole thing seemed done, but then this happened. Another accuser came forward at 6 p.m. on August 24. A Chinese netizen accusing Lucas of similar things. Gaslighting, using her for money, and cheating. Let's call her Fangirl B. She actually said that she wasn't going to reveal this information initially, because they broke up on somewhat good terms. But according to this fangirl, when she saw the initial accuser's post yesterday, she realized that her experience and the original poster's experience were similar, and also that the timing coincided. She kind of put two and two together, and realized that Lucas seemed to be seeing multiple people at the same time, or cheating. She said that Lucas manipulated her into buying designer clothes. She claimed that he cheated on her while asking her to buy him luxury gifts. And that he specifically requested the brands Saint Laurent and Balenciaga and said he didn't like Burberry, even though it's a brand that he had a promotional deal with at that time. She actually discovered his phone number through AirDrop, sent him a message from there, and that's how they started talking and built a relationship. She claims that at one point before coming over to her place, he claimed that he didn't have any outerwear to wear like a jacket, and asked her if she could buy him one, and she actually includes a receipt from Balenciaga, which was the jacket that she claims to have bought for him. She also shared a picture of the jacket, and shared a picture of the two of them somewhere. It looks like they're drinking wine, and he seems to be wearing the same jacket that she posts in the picture. She also included a photograph of him sleeping. Moreover, Fangirl B revealed that in their conversations, that Lucas spoke ill about his friends. Talking about his best friend during his trainee days who hadn't debuted yet, Lucas called this person garbage. He complained that his fellow members were disobedient, lazy, and difficult to guide. Some of them did not have any real skills, but were able to debut solely due to their looks. Lucas also added that a certain member stole his fashion jobs. Mentioning other things, Lucas said he disliked running Manchina because it's tiring and his seniors gave him a lot of stress. He even hated fans taking photos of him at the airport. Lucas further claimed that his family was going through financial difficulties after his father's investments failed. Thus, he had to work hard to make money and purchase a house and a car. During their conversations, Lucas mostly just complained about everything in his life and saw it as unfair to him. The story ended when she said Lucas broke up using the excuse of having a packed schedule, and probably because she had heard on the grapevine about a thing or two regarding Lucas's dating history. She also confronted him about his flirting with other girls, which of course he had denied doing. She repeatedly checked whether he had a girlfriend or not, and he would always say no, but she feels that he took advantage of his status as a celebrity and his fans' love to satisfy his own needs through trickery and flirting with other girls. And she once again states that she's just revealing this information because she doesn't want anyone else to be used or hurt like she was. She provided proof in the form of receipts and chat screenshots. But things got even crazier when a third fangirl, let's call her C, appeared on the scene. She revealed that Lucas contacted her first and told her that he had lusted after her for a long time keeping her letters and gifts that she had given him at a fan signing, which contained her Instagram and Weibo details. Later on, she received messages from a private account of Lucas. She also attached a screenshot of Lucas sending her a WeChat request, and the WeChat ID is the same ID that we have seen him use with the other accusers. The male idol said that this is the first time he had a special relationship with a fan. After that, Lucas confessed that he had privately met a similar Chinese fan, but because this girl was too ugly the two just had meals and then left. Notably, Lucas once confided that he had been in a romantic relationship with a trainee girl in SM, but for unknown reasons, this trainee had to withdraw from SM, then became depressed, making an attempt to take her own life. This led to lots of serious arguments between them, and the two finally parted ways. Therefore, Lucas took advantage of this excuse to hesitate to get into another deep relationship. He confessed that he feared getting caught by his agency about their love, and once even faked illness to not star in a variety show. Talking of variety shows, she also said Lucas hated the way Running Man China always edited him to look foolish and clueless. He also mentioned he actually wanted to have a more mature and charming image, rather than having to always be a clown to garner attention. Backing up her accusation, 
This net is in posted screenshots of spreadsheets, fan sign receipts, flights, and hotel records, proving her timing overlapped with one of the other alleged victims. Later, Lucas repeatedly poured sweet words into C's ears, such as she was the only one he could never forget, in its intensity when falling in love with her. By this point the situation was becoming uncontrollable, which led to SM Entertainment putting Lucas on hiatus and releasing an apology statement regarding the allegations. Being aware of how critical the situation was, on August 25, only two days after the triple allegations, Lucas released a handwritten apology letter on Instagram, directly apologizing for the wrongful actions in the past and said he would deeply reflect on the things he did. On the same day, Label V, an official subsidiary label of SM Entertainment, released a statement and suspends the upcoming release of the song, music, video, and all related content of Jalapeno by Wavy's Lucas and Hendry, including a music broadcast schedule on M Countdown the next day. With the official apology of Lucas and the announcement of cancellation for his duo debut, people thought that things might be over. Yet to their surprise, everything got even worse, and the note it ended on was even sourer. SM Entertainment made a statement apologizing. Lucas released a very vague apology, and then SM forced him into hiatus with no clear answers on the situation. Then on the 25th of August, at midnight on the Daubin Forum, suddenly appeared a jaw-dropping post by a young man, revealing his love story with Lucas, let's call him Boyfriend D. The young man provided a video of Lucas which netizens were quick to take screenshots off and share on MXH. In particular, D revealed that he and Lucas dated in 2015. Notably, D said that Lucas was bisexual, meaning that he had relationships with both men and women, but that he has a preference for females. Before he fell in love with the other guy, Lucas used to love girls, but in class, he loved boys. According to this guy, he and Lucas dated in 2015. He included as evidence a clip of Lucas that has never been made public before. In addition, although Lucas is now a famous idol and their relationship was already over, he still texted back and forth with his ex-boyfriend. SM Entertainment did not give feedback on the incident making the fans impatient waiting for news. Fans were shocked because they couldn't believe that behind the handsome face was such a chaotic person. On August 26, the first girl A posted a second thread, giving a deeper insight into the Lucas allegations, including looking down on his fellow members, his staff, and even his manager specifically. During a Thailand trip, the manager made a critical mistake while at a wavy fan meeting in Thailand which caused damage to all members, yet thanks to Lucas, everything was solved. Since then he had most power in the group, and that's why the manager had seen him leaving the door multiple times to see her, but didn't say anything because Lucas had got the upper hand. She also said he had a severe cigarette addiction, which made him suffer a lot for not being able to smoke in front of music video directors. Lots of unexpected details about his past were also revealed by Fangirlay in the second post. According to what Lucas confided in her, that he used to visit massage parlors and karaoke bars in Hong Kong when he was a student, because he made poor choices and friends. He also showed off to A that he often got into fights at school, and thanks to fighting so well, he was even invited to join the triads by the boss when he lived in Hong Kong. More shockingly, Lucas was said to have had his first sexual experience with a girl when he was just 13 years old, and bragged about that. With Lucas by now knee-deep in scandals, his wakeboarding coach stepped up to defend him. The wakeboarding coach shared that she had known him as a sweet and kind person. I got to know him as his coach for a show. He's a kid who is well-mannered, likes the nature, and loves animals. His dream is to work hard and make money to buy a house for his parents. The coach also uploaded some screenshots of her texts with Lucas, including a few voice messages. She revealed a text from Lucas which read, Yeah, just like what I said the other day. I'm also very happy that you came into my life. You've made me grow as a person. Thank you. Let's work hard and have some new experiences before we meet again in the future. This is what life is all about. I have met the right person. Lucas. When the alleged fourth victim, 
let's call her fangirly, saw the post. She realized that the times he was texting the coach coincided with the times when he was texting her, and retorted in anger. She claimed that he was flirting with the coach at the same time he was dating her, as the timings on the chat logs matched up. Wang Yake, she said. You have a secret account because one main account is not enough for you. Do you have enough time to flirt with the wakeboarding coach that you just met, after chatting with your girlfriend? Subsequently, she continued to expose him. Everyone, you don't need to follow me, she said. I'm just here to reveal a little bit of proof. He's trashy enough already, but I couldn't stand seeing him dragging his teammates down. No one deserves being treated like that. There are many more girlfriends, they just don't want any trouble, so they are not standing up. I didn't want to make him look even worse, but this has crossed the line. Don't blame others, this is what you deserve. Just within five days, Lucas encountered the very first perfect storm in his career, and probably in the history of K-pop. He was not only caught up in one, but five of the most detrimental scandals, that can lead to a dead-end career of most male idols, including dating while at the peak of their career, abusing fans' trust, and having an arrogant attitude to both his act and his staff. Because of the striking similarities between the girls' stories, not only the public but even a proportion of the fans eventually came to believe the allegations. In light of the depth of the scandals, Lucas's largest Chinese fan side, Lucas CNFC, decided to resign as a whole, and would refund all of the funds to everyone as soon as possible. This move is considered as great anger and disappointment from fans toward Lucas. Chinese fan bases had long been famous for their strong support regardless of situations. Even Chinese fans were now furious at his actions and demanded Lucas leave both Wavy and NCD. On Weibo, angry comments with thousands of people asked if he had especially apologized to Hendry, whose career was put at risk just by the mess he created, and they destroyed lots of merch related to Lucas. Without the support of his biggest fan bar, seasonal fans, and worst of all the general public, Lucas's career was put on hold indefinitely by SM Entertainment, and he fell from the top most famous member of Wavy and NCT to become the most hated member just within several days. Following the controversy, the brands who collaborated with him like Gucci, specifically removed all posts and images related to Lucas, and not long after that Burberry did the same. Gerlain also took down his images, though he was the main face running for their campaign at the time. Running Man China, aka the show in which Lucas was one of the favorite members, also took his picture down from their Facebook poster cover, and never mentioned him again after the scandal. Meanwhile, Chinese indie fans on Weibo piled on the hate, demanding that Lucas be permanently kicked out from NCT and Wavy. However, the most obvious thing that no one seemed to be asking at the time, was. Who are these women? Were they real people with real faces who actually knew him? And if so, would they come out publicly instead of just hiding behind anonymous accounts? Meanwhile, Loomis, Lucas's fanbase, started the laborious time-consuming job of wading through and investigating all the claims made by the victims. They put together a private cyber investigation team to help uncover the truth and dig deeper into the accusations. What they discovered was startling, and I won't go through it here in detail because that's being covered elsewhere, but just to summarize. 1. The account that predicted everything, down to SM and the fans' reaction, was created just the day before the scandal broke out. They implied that they were connected to the news agency Dispatch, which turned out to be false. 2. The WeChat screenshots presented as evidence were just a bunch of badly photoshopped pictures with unusually wide gaps in between the messages, and some of them didn't even have the same measurements. 3. None of the times match either. Many of the times they allegedly met Lucas he was actually out of the country on another schedule. 4. The video message one of the accusers claimed he sent her was actually taken from two different messages that Lucas had sent to fans on Bubble that had subsequently been edited together. 5. So-called receipts for gifts to Lucas turned out to be photoshopped fakes. 6. The jacket she claimed that she bought for him was a stolen picture from an online seller. 7. The alleged photograph of Lucas sleeping in a hotel room paid for by one of the victims actually turned out to be the sofa at the wavy dorm. 8. 
earring that was claimed to have been bought for Lucas actually turned out to be one that Winwin had gifted to Lucas. 9. The Webo account of Lucas's second alleged victim, which started spreading the rumors against him, turned out to be a commercial account. All the allegations from the account were deleted, and the account name was changed to Madi Poems, as it looks like it had been sold to a matched account. Most of the accounts posting the information were finally traced back to Nosa Songs, crazy fans, who Lucas had trash talked at some point before. So, how did such a bizarre set of unsubstantiated claims have the impact that they did? They appeared to use the same psychological techniques that governments use in what's known as false. That's where a manufactured event is used to sway public opinion. In those circumstances, the critical thing to its success is getting in early with an emotional-laden narrative and fixing that in people's minds. The perpetrators have the advantage of seizing the initiative, while the debunking may take weeks or even months to expose the false narrative. By that time most people have locked in their minds the original story and will be very resistant to accepting any deviation from it. This is known as cognitive dissonance. It's worth noting that researchers found on one of the Weibo accounts, run by a user called Your Highness, indicated that she studied psychology, and a photo of a psychology book in Chinese was found. So it's likely that the perpetrators were well aware of these techniques. The investigation by NCTisms and Loomis was presented to SM Entertainment, but strangely nothing was heard back. Radio silence was all fans received. Then on February 9, 2022, fans finally got an actual update from Lucas. He posted for the first time on Instagram since his handwritten apology, though it wasn't an update on his well-being or a picture of himself. It was a black and white picture of what seems to be a sunset, and the picture was posted without a caption. At the time, fans were hopeful that this was a sign that Lucas would slowly be coming back to Instagram. But they had misinterpreted the meaning behind the photo. What he was really telling them with the black and white photo was that his career had been sunsetted. Then in February 2023, Lucas posted a black and white video to his Instagram page of him dance practicing in a studio. Fans and YouTubers were quick to call this out as an imminent comeback, but again the message was misinterpreted. What Lucas was really telling them is that his idle dancing days were over. Then in May 2023, nearly two years, yes, two years after the initial accusations, SM and Lucas released statements saying that he would leave both NCD and Wavy groups permanently. Yet he would still remain with SM Entertainment and would pursue individual activities. So the big question is, why the long wait of nearly two years? Why were fans kept hanging on, during which time they were becoming increasingly distraught at the not knowing and the inaction? To understand this, we need to look at what was happening with SM Entertainment at the time. The founder and major shareholder Lee Su Man, known as the godfather of K-pop, was embroiled in an offshore payment scandal. His only way out of the problem was to sell his shares and exit the company completely. Selling the stakeholding in a large company, where the seller is the founder and a key person, is not a quick or simple task. He would have wanted the company to look at its very best in order to maximize the value. The last thing Lee Su Man would have wanted at that time was to be embroiled in another major scandal, especially one that would reflect badly on the management. Even a 1% movement in share price could have affected its value by millions of dollars. That's why it's only after Lee Su Man's final 15% share stake was sold first to Hybe, then finally to Kakao, that the subject of Lucas's scandal was brought up again. So as you can see, the feelings and emotions of the fans counted for nothing, in the face of business, and in particular money. One theory that also floated was that SM was up for sale. Could a competitor interested in buying it like Kakao have been responsible? They were after all caught owning the infamous website called Idol Issue, which was essentially a front for bashing Kakao's competitor groups like La Serafin, Espa, and New Jeans while promoting their subsidiary groups like ones under Starship and IST. Another theory is that a Chinese competitor or even the Chinese government themselves could have somehow been involved. They were after all having a crackdown on what they termed sissy pants, feminine male artists. In September 2019, the state-run agency, National Radio and Television Administration, condemned these stars as Niang Pao which is a phrase used to describe men who are effeminate or flamboyant in their behavior or appearance. 
and in September 2021, the Cyberspace Administration of China introduced an eight-point plan which included establishing a correct beauty standard and boycotting sissy idols. However, the CCP connection seems unlikely, as if they had been involved. Then, instead of sounding like a Wattpad story written by some middle school kid, the whole thing would have been carried out much more professionally. With real people, real complaints, real receipts, real video footage, and above all else, real court cases. But still in many people's minds there is no smoke without fire. They thought that there could have been other victims who were real, and the Sasong information was just a representation slash guess of what the truth was, but not the actual truth itself. And Lucas did set himself up for that, by asking fans to upload selfies to the platform bubble in May the year before. He said, everyone, give me strength. Show me your love. Upload photos and tags on social platforms. Lucas, I miss you so much. People did state if the uploader is beautiful, they may receive a private message from Lucas himself, questioning about him trying to choose a concubine online. So that brings us to the final shocking conclusion as to why SM took so long to make a decision, while still remaining on what appears to be very friendly terms with Lucas. For that we have to go back to Lucas's time growing up in Hong Kong. He didn't come from a privileged background or any arts foundation. He grew up in the Shaden neighborhood and went to one of the worst schools in the district, Yong Kam Yoon College, which had a bottom 3C ranking. He was considered by Hong Kong people to be what they call an MK, which is a reference to the Mong Kok area in Kowloon, the red light district of Hong Kong, where triads and teen gangs hang out. In August 2015 Hong Kong was part of the SM Global Audition. Lucas turned up to the audition, threw just three stock poses, and was quickly accepted. This seems at odds to most K-pop industry auditions, which are usually described by attendees as arduous and involving multiple rounds of auditions before having any chance at being accepted. The only dance moves he knew at that time were vibing and clapping to songs, and he had no background in singing or rapping. Considering his upbringing Lucas appears as a diamond in the rough that SM picked up and buffed up. In the short time of just two years they transformed him into a K-pop idol, which is testimony to SM's training and not least of all Lucas's great dedication and potential. SM packaged him with the cute, loyal, spontaneous personality and everyone seemed to forget about his past. In the aftermath of his scandal his past resurfaced when Chinese indie fans who hated him most likely for racial reasons and for how they perceived his personality, joined in the Lucas debacle by bringing his past back up. Photos of him working in a sauna and karaoke bar in Hong Kong, possibly when he was of borderline age, came to light. What the accusers had collectively and skillfully done was to slowly peel the gloss off Lucas, peeling back the layers one by one, until the original Lucas was laid bare for all to see. And what didn't help? was the fact that he often acted like a parody of a 90s rent boy. <laughs> Interestingly, the old photos that emerged hold a tell about Lucas, where the guy who normally loves the camera and his own image so much suddenly morphs into the camera shy when photographed inside those establishments. In many ways Lucas had become a victim of his past, and questions remained about how he could have so easily have passed an audition for SM by just throwing three poses. Was he perhaps known to someone within the Hong Kong entertainment industry, who was fond of him, and helped push him in the SM door? With all the scandals surrounding Lucas, SM was between a rock and a hard place. If they brought him back from hiatus perhaps worse allegations would come out. If they left him on hiatus they could avoid all those potential problems and also give it time to see if his main group NCT would continue to be successful without him. And it may have also brought up the subject of questionable recruitment tactics on the part of SM. Their brand and reputation was after all at stake. And while they didn't do anything legally wrong, it's not exactly going to win them Recruiter of the Year award, finding talent from saunas and karaoke bars in the red light district of Hong Kong. Is this what Lucas was trying to tell his audience when he posts the shallow image? Saying in effect you're all being a bit shallow, a bit naive as to how things really work. 
Despite all the hardships for him to endure, Lucas seems to be doing okay, as he has a strong mental fortitude. He will have past earnings and be on a regular wage from SM throughout, so getting paid without having to do hours of grueling dance practice and all the other work can't be that bad. He has after all reached the top of the K-pop industry, which is an amazing achievement at a young age. So what is his future? He's not the best dancer, though definitely upper level with great stamina and stage presence. He doesn't have an outstanding talent in singing. But what he does have is an ease in front of the camera that some idols never achieve. The most likely future for him is to resume his modeling career. For some brands and niche markets, his questionable past might not matter. Modeling men's luxury watches, as well as niche men's clothing, could all be good examples of where he could do well. It's the fans though that bear the brunt of the consequences in this story. Left in the dark for nearly two years by the management, their idol's name dragged through the mud. No answers to the investigation, no legal proceedings against the perpetrators, just seems plain wrong. And now the final nail, the announcement of him leaving the groups that he centered for, NCT and Wavy. Sadly, it appears that no one emerges unscathed from this gripping tale. Thank you for watching and tell us your thoughts in the comments. We'll see you next time.